Good afternoon, Rotarians and all you guests. We got lots of guests, so a lot of first timers, a lot of people that haven't been here in a while, maybe not since COVID started even. So welcome everybody. It's good to see it. Good to see that there's almost no uh, seats left. So thanks for coming. I would like to uh, invite Helen Bolanis and Scott Hinshaw up here, and Helen's going to, yeah, all the way up. Helen's going to do an invocation for us, and Scott will lead the pledge. Thank you, Bob. Dear Lord God, one of your great saints said, our hearts are restless until they're Lord, you've given us the opportunity to rest in you by serving others. Rotary gives us a chance to show love to our neighbors, those men and women sitting next to us today, those men and women who live next door, and people who live thousands of miles away. Rotary is the, an organization that allows us to love others like the Creator loves us. We thank Him for that opportunity, and in a special way, we raise up the dear friends and citizens of Kentucky who were so devastated by the forces of the tornadoes. Let us just take a moment to remember how great is our God and think about the people who have lost so much. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Helen. I'd also like to thank John Romer and Spartan Chemical as our December week or monthly sponsors. And I see a lot of extra people here, so I know there's some guests. And if you would go to the floor, Mike, and, and uh, introduce any guests. Don't all go at once. Tell me there's no guests here. You can't be serious. That was my best John McEnroe. <laughs> you can't be serious. Um, so I know there's guests. If you are a guest, would you please stand? Maybe I can get that. If you're not a Rotarian, can you stand? All right, let's give him a hand. Thank you for coming. We also have uh, a few other people that have passed away. Our Vice President Travis's mother passed away Friday, and Tom Smith of AV Tech also passed away. And uh, so if we could take just one more moment to reflect on them. Thank you. Uh, would like to remind you that we have a lot of good speakers here, but I know a lot of you have ideas for programs. Um, we have a program, the next program committee meeting is Feb February 7th, but if you have other ideas in the meantime, please talk to Jackie, talk to me, get on our website. There's a spot where you can write ideas. So we're always looking for uh, really good, dynamic, and timely speakers. So. Please get your ideas in. Then it has to go through the program committee. So get some get some things going. Um, I would also Bob Riker. Would you please stand up? And I knew he was going to be here. I was talking to him last week, and he happened to mention that he has 51 years of perfect attendance. So I knew darn well he'd be here, so we could recognize that. 
It's crazy. I think I, I had one, one six-month stretch where I made it every time. <laughs> I'm doing better this year, though. <laughs> I'm going to skip one just so Cindy can come up here and run a meeting, I think. Um, next, Tim Harrington. Would you please come up and introduce our speaker, Laura Kaprowski? Thank you, Bob. Uh, even in my retirement, there are issues that are near and dear to my heart that go above and beyond being director of the Ability Center. The most important issue to me is having access to public transportation in our community. We have all watched the ebbs and flows of TARDA over the years, and we finally have come to a place where we can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Laura Lepowski. Laura comes to us with over 25 years in the public transit industry. She has recently joined Tarda as its CEO, and it's my pleasure to introduce Laura. Well, good afternoon, and thank you. I agree, Tim. It's, it's, the light is at the end of the tunnel. We're out of the tunnel, for Tarda, like to say. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge and introduce um, some other key people who are here. We have a number of the Tarda Board of Trustees who are here, and really, it's not just about the employees and myself. It's really about this board that dedicate their time, their service um, to this community. So Kendra Smith, who's also on the Rotary Board, our Board of Trustees Vice President, Mary Morrison, um, Dr. Pat McKinstry, and Michael Hart. And I think I cover if there's any other Board of Trustees members. Okay. And then we always talk about Team Tarda. So it's me and my coworkers who make this system work and operate seven days a week, almost feels like 24 hours a day because we do have to keep a pulse on our system out there. So we have a number of members of Team Tarda here. And if you can give a wave, um, and there would be more, but again, like I said, I mean, the system is running seven days a week and um, we are busy. We are hustling these days ever since November 2nd and the passage of the infrastructure bill. So I do want to say you are all a very welcoming social group. So I forgot to do my normal, Emma, which is to come up here and check everything out. Um, but I, so hopefully this will work with the remote. On off button. Is it on the bottom, the top? Okay. My apologies. There we go. So um, we're going to talk a lot about our buses, our fleets, our routes, our programs, our plans. But I can tell you at the Beginning of the day, at the end of the day, it's about people. We are taking people places. Our new mission statement is empowering people to make connections. So I just want to tell you a couple stories here. Um, the first is the upper right corner, um, the gentleman with the really fashionable bow tie. That's my good friend, Derek Clay. We both grew up in the Toledo area. We both went to Columbus to work. He is now president and CEO of a very accomplished government affairs lobbying group, New Vision Group. He's often on the TV there giving political commentary. But um, Derek, when he knew I was coming back here to our hometown, and he knew then that I had the opportunity to lead the organization, just could not hold back on all of his great memories of using TARDA to get around 
town as a young adult to he remembered Southwick Mall and also that's how he got to school every day as a TPS student. And then the next um, individual is Austin Mish. He's got the, tar the tarps, swag wear, that um, t-shirt. Actually, Austin made that. He is 20 years old. He's been riding tarps for two years. Um, Austin is just a huge fan of ours. But you know what? He has a very severe disability with autism. And he is able, as a young adult, to have independence, enjoy life, um, thanks to our service. And he is very hopeful someday, and we are too, that he can come and be one of our employees. Um, below Austin is one of our customers, and I'm going to talk to you a lot about how we have repositioned TARDA to be customer-focused on customer experience. And then finally, we have there is an individual working at Amazon. And I will talk to you about also our renewed focus on economic development, how we are supporting our business community. In fact, working with Amazon and Rossford and at Southwick was one of my first projects. I can't tell you, it's just, it's the beginning of many companies and conversations we've had where before they even locate, before they even open their doors, they want to be assured that Tarta is there. And in Amazon's case, they built covered bus shelters, they designed their parking lot and facility so that our vehicles could get in and out very efficiently. And that's the way to go because they know like so many other companies, employers, probably many of you in the room, in this environment, we can't have any barriers to hiring employees and transportation just cannot be, needs to be a connector, not a barrier. So I'm going to talk about TARDA service, but just to kind of help me know how much I should really talk about um, trans public transit in general, I just want to do a real quick interactive quiz. So in the last five years, um, if you could raise your hand if you've used public transportation anywhere, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the state. Awesome, fantastic. Um, in the last five years, have you used Uber or Lyft? Anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world? Okay, this is a really mobility savvy group. Now here's the tougher one maybe. In the last year, who's used a scooter in Toledo? Or a bike? All right, okay. All right, way to go. Um, so let me go through TARDA services really quickly, and I think it's going to all make sense to all of you. Our bread and butter are our 28 bus routes, and those are running six days a week as early, even they start even before 6 a.m. because we need to be, bring people down to our transit hub. Um, very early and it runs till 10 p.m. at night on Friday and 9 p.m. on Sunday. Then we have our TARPS via, um, program, our paratransit. That is to help individuals who maybe can't use our other services all the time or at all. They have physical or developmental or cognitive disabilities and yet they still need to go to work, they need to get to appointments, they need to live life. And so what we do is customers who feel that that would be the best fit of service for them, they come and meet with our TARP staff and we help go through an assessment to make sure it is going to be a good fit for them. Next, Rocket Lift. And um, not sure how many of you know that we operate the transit service on campus for University of Toledo. It was really important to myself and Charles Adimwe, our COO. When we got there, we saw these old, tired, yellow school buses on campus. We're like, no, this is our one of our major anchor higher ed institutions. We need to give it an elevated look. Also, our UT students and faculty have access to the whole system. So let's give them a taste of what transit is really like. So we gave, we worked with University of Toledo to give three actual transit buses. They're, I think, 30, 35 foot, kind of our smaller. And we worked with the university marketing department to be able to have this new branded elevated look. And then above that is call -a ride That's a version of micro transit. Um, and we are, ex that's in our suburban communities. It works really well in more low density areas um, where a bus route just isn't gonna be the best fit. And so we operate that service in six areas and we have quite the growing ridership. 
And to do all this is Team TARDA. It takes mechanics, it takes people taking care of our facilities, of course, drivers, customer service, our administrative team. And also our team has a renewed interest in being involved in the community. We're not just looking for events that um, have to be tied to transportation. We're looking at events that make our community better. So I told Adam I was going to, to call this out with um, to lead, keep Toledo, Lucas County beautiful. It was our first year. It was the first year for the literally competition. We were all in our team captain, Crystal Frere is right over there. Every weekend during the summer, we cleaned up around our Central Avenue campus and we got quite competitive with it. And I was really proud. We all were. We ended up winning the whole competition. So um, we look forward to next year and be um, win as well. These are the essentials that I just want to show as well. So to give you some framework and as far as ridership before COVID, our numbers are coming in. We're most of the nation is about 65%, 69% ridership. We are on our fixed route, um, kind of our latest numbers and projections are showing more like 80, 81%. And on paratransit, it's even higher. We will probably be um, right about in the next couple of months at our full 250,000 rides a year. Just to put it in perspective, when I worked at CODA in Columbus, Ohio, we our paratransit service there was 275,000 rides. So this community really depends on paratransit service. And our downtown transit hub, we opened that up in 2019. We closed it down for a while during the pandemic, during safety, um, to be safe for employees and customers. But it's reopened. It's at Huron Street and Cherry Street. We are doing something called the Hub of Hope, where we are actually inviting um, community services to be present at the hub, meet our customers, provide your service. The library has been there. Um, by the end of the month, three times, we have a number of other services coming in. If you have interest, please let me know. We're looking for nonprofits, other public entities. And our transit hub has free Wi-Fis, restrooms, drinking fountains, water bottle. You can refill your water bottle. So it's supposed to be a place of comfort as well as um, customer service there to help our customers. And our TARDA Board of Trustees, so it is 13 members. We have these seven communities that appoint representatives to the board. Mary, our Vice President of the Board, who represents the City of Sylvania, and then Kelsey Hoagland, rep, our President, represents um, City of Waterville. And just an interesting fact with Kelsey, we both worked at CODA, so um, Kelsey's got a long history of transit background, and she works for ODOT, so it's great to have her expertise on our board. And where are people going? We just did a customer survey this fall, we interviewed over 300 customers riding our fixed route, and these are the top places that they are going, and obviously these are necessary places. We also have an older population who are using our service, um, and certainly it was good insight on our demographics so that we can continue to grow our ridership. Customer experience, satisfaction, um, this will be woven in throughout my presentation, but it's really at the heart of what we do. If you provide any service, um, it's not a surprise, right? It's just, you know, we were, um, I think we took too long to get there, but as soon as our new team arrived, um, this was one, it became one of our four success goals. So how do we know that we're doing well? And we are a data-driven um, organization. That is our new approach, and we're going to get data, and that's what's going to tell us what we're doing well and what we need to do better. And what we tend to do well is we have safe drivers, both for our fixed route and our paratransit. We do give good customer service. So that was um, very helpful that we were able to know that, as well as for our paratransit service to know that 67% count on us as the primary transportation. I mean, almost three-fourths of our customers. That's very telling. And there were also other areas of improvement that we've been moving in as well, such as making sure that the vehicles are clean and um, safe. So community partnerships is um, just becoming a real, 
It's actually our second of four success goals. It's critical to what we do. We have been really busy this year from Ohio Loves Transit Week to being involved in the census to um, human trafficking. But one community partnership that really proud of is right there in the middle um, is Jeep Fest, Toledo Jeep Fest. And I know I saw, yeah, hi Whitney, <laughs> I saw you there. And um, it was just such a great partnership. Um, and we elevated in a number of ways. We had a wrapped Jeep Fest bus, and we're definitely going to do that again. And I know Whitney wants to, um, and we're excited to let's launch it early. And that was so fun to work on the design and the brand of that. Um, we also worked with Whitney and the fest and the festival so that we could have a Jeep Fest Express. But we wanted to approach a little differently, and appreciate that Whitney was along for that ride. We want wanted to give people the experience of one of our actual routes. So Monroe Street is a transportation spine in this community. And we just feel that a lot of people who, you may have two cars in your garage, but you want to go downtown and during Jeep Fest, I mean, don't let the drive down there and trying to find parking and where what streets you can and can't go down. I mean, let us take, take the stress away. And so what we did is we encouraged people to park at Franklin Park Mall and we took you on the 19 and we dropped you off right at the the um the doorsteps of the festival and our hope was that that way the customers who experienced that would say okay i could do that again i'll do that for a mud hens game i'll do that for a concert i'll just do that to go downtown and eat and um, we actually had 50 percent increase of ridership on the 19 that saturday so we can't wait for next year the fact that we're bringing back Sunday service will allow us to be there for the whole festival, um, just as they grow to be a whole weekend event. And we also find in being involved in the community, um, COVID and the pandemic was just, it, it, who would have ever guessed we are still living with COVID. And so we wanted to be there in a number of ways. First of all, we were never going to stop providing service. It may not be the same um, hours of service, but we were never going to stop. We also at the beginning did a very um, safe, intentional move. We provided shadow buses. So we would not allow for about the first close to a year uh, more than 10 passengers on one of our large buses. Let me tell you, that was critical because these employees, or our employees deserved that kind of safety, but as well as the customers, because these were the people who still had to go to work. We all got to go on Zoom. I, I got to go on Zoom. I'm sure I've talked to many people. They don't have those kind of jobs. They go, go to Zoom. They're going to Amazon. They're going to stock the shelves so that we do have toilet paper and other necessities to buy. And they deserve to have that safety. We have now lifted that restriction, but we're still remaining fare free. Um, it is, again, a safety measure so people aren't queuing up. We don't have, we can minimize interaction. And again, we know that this is a really precarious time, how the pandemic is hitting people close to home and financially. But we took a look and we got an ask from the V Project and our city county health department. They really wanted us to help be a part of that solution of getting people vaccinated. We tried running shuttles to the rec center, but what we really learned was we need to go meet people where they are. So we started going into neighborhoods and uh, meeting people where they could not receive or get to a vaccine. But we also were able to expand our demographic reach and do some fun things. And we went to Toledo Spirits. We went to the Mud Hens game. Um, I, at first, it was a little odd for me. I've never been a part of Shots for Shots. You know, um, usually transit, you're a little more you know, you stay away from that kind of conversation. And no, our general counsel is here. No one did shots on the bus, Joan, okay? Um, for sure. But um, what that did was, I mean, I would often go at, go to these events, and so would our customer experience chief, um, Patty Talbot, and we could talk to people who'd never been on a TARDA bus or had never, or had been so many years, and they had no idea that this is what buses look like at this day and age. So it was great. 
and except the fact that we're still doing it. That's unfortunate. Um, so how are we doing all this? And it's a new team. It's a new day at TARDA, quite literally. I have I am part of a team of nine people, nine professionals with over 200 years of experience. Think of me with 25 years of transit and transportation experience. Um, these are professionals who have held um, incredible jobs and had incredible experience in Colorado, in Michigan, in Georgia, Louisiana, Kansas, California. I'm not even capturing it all. And the fact that they want to come here, um, when you are in public transit, it it's it's kind of a calling. It really is. And the projects and what we are getting started to do, sometimes you only get to do that once in your career. Like the we'll talk about TARDA next. I got to do that at Coda and Columbus. I never thought I'd get a chance to do that again. And I know what a game changer it is because Columbus used to be, I mean, it was cars only and what we were able to do with the system redesign. So again, um, we have pulled the some of the best and brightest here. Um, I feel like we, we have helped grow our population um, with these recruits. And so that brings all these other points. These are top of mind for all of us. And we have a very different culture at TARDA. Uh, we are keeping track of what we're doing. It just isn't words. We have to hold ourselves accountable. We have to be transparent to the community. We have to report back to the board. So our five-year strategic plan is our game plan. And we'd love to do all kinds of things, but we got to boil it down to what are the top four goals. And these are them what they are, financial sustainability, customer experience, employee engagement, and community value. And now I'm going to transition to how transit is a driving force um, from independence, economic development, as well as just an exciting future ahead. So it can't be a more exciting time in public transit. Um, this is just images of a little bit of what's going on in our industry. And it started actually several years ago um, with the talk of autonomous vehicles, mobile apps, um, alternative fuel vehicles. And we are looking at all of those and more. So there is the battery electric bus. That is from Gillig. That's an American bus manufacturer. And they were actually on our Central Avenue campus earlier this fall with one of their electric buses. Amazing was on the whole time, none of us could believe it. And we were able to have our drivers take it out on the road, um, just incredible. And something that we are seriously looking at along with other possible alternative fuel vehicles like hydrogen buses. Below that is Easy Fare. TARDA was one of the first founding members of a consortium in Ohio to use the Easy Fare mobile payment platform. And in fact, when they launched, TARDA had the highest utilization of this mobile payment app. Um, now the consortium has grown, system up in Ann Arbor is using it, systems out of state, because the platform is um, Masabi, which is really one of the leaders in the world um, as far as mobile payment. And the options that you can use now extend to smart cards. They also have incredible features so that even those who are unbanked or not really, you know, maybe technically challenged are able to use this. So I'm really excited in the coming year how we can explain how we're going when we restart fares, which we will next year, that we can actually extend the technology across all of our customers at a way to meet their needs. Um, it's just really incredible how quickly this is growing. So we are poised to be very similar to these other systems that are going cashless. But let me tell you, cashless doesn't mean that cash isn't part of the equation. It's just not used right on the bus. Um, Ava, that interesting looking vehicle is an autonomous vehicle. And we all know if you've lately been going to look for a car, all of our cars have autonomous features. And there's a lot of safety to that. Um, the transit industry is no different. For several years, I know I was part um, 
again, go back to my days in Columbus, part of um, Smart Columbus and piloting an AV shuttle. This is coming to our industry um, and how and exactly it will be used will probably be several years up to a decade away, but I have no doubt that this will be integrated. It will especially help us with hiring challenges in terms of finding drivers. Um, and there's a lot of safety features as well. So looking forward to what the um, horizon and future is for that. And then above it is Coda Plus is a couple of, of microtransit on demand. So in the coming year, you're going to hear about our call ride, our own microtransit, that now you have to call in the morning, schedule your ride, um, which is very limiting and um, we can do better than that. And so the future is like in Coda Plus, you actually have an app on your phone. It looks very similar to Uber and Lyft. And if you are at the office and you need to go um, meet someone for lunch or for a meeting or appointment, you can request your request the service. It would come to you. It is a shared ride. So if you've done Uber or Lyft pool, which I've done, um, it's still going to give you a really um, great service. And it's going to also, especially in areas of our community that we've talked about where there's not, it's just not conducive to fixed route service. So um, very excited about how this technology is allowing such a better customer experience uh, for our community. So before we talk about what happened November 2nd with um, Issue 12 and TARDA, let's, um, we'll first start with the infrastructure bill. November was really big for TARDA um, in that way. So we as a country, this is historic for infrastructure. We haven't seen anything like this. And it's not just public transit and roads and bridges. It's also water and broadband. Um, this is a game changer for us as a nation. And so $107 billion for public transit, that is both uh, funding that is going to be distributed by formula. We're looking at about 50 million over six years, but it's also going to be in the way of competitive grants. So we're gonna be aggressively working with partners and communities. This is such a fantastic way to bring back our taxpayer dollars from DC to this community and make a difference. Um, there's also a couple of key initiatives or emphasis in this bill that also we have to take notice of and be aware of. So diversity and equity is very, um, is woven through and is an emphasis in a lot of these grant programs, which I think is going to align with some really exciting plans and ideas that I've heard are already underway in the community. And then addressing climate change. So we have to upgrade our fleet. We have one of the oldest fleets in the state of Ohio. Most of our buses and vehicles, paratransit are 12 years or older. So this is a perfect time for us to upgrade with clean um, fuel or alternative fuel or electric vehicles. So issue 12 happened and just got, I mean, it's been 14, 15 years laying the groundwork. I know just how tough it is. When I arrived in April 2020, um, our previous CEO just, she was hitting the ground running with, and that wasn't our year, but we learned a lot. Um, and I also learned just, you know, not to take this for granted by any means. Um, this is the community who, um, who really made this happen. And we have a lot of hustling to do to deliver on what we said would ha happen. It's going to, first of all, expand our service area. So we will finally be able to extend service and options throughout Lucas County. We'll still be in the city of Rossford. We're going to increase our service levels. So we will have more frequent routes. We will restore Sunday service and we can modernize and bring some of that technology that I talked about that's in the future of our industry. So the other point is just that the sales tax, it's, I've learned more about sales tax than I ever thought. And it's like, my gosh, I thought I um, did a lot. I knew a lot about government as a poli-sci major, but no. This, um, it will start April 1st, 2022, and it we won't be receiving our first actual, 
check of sales tax until late summer, early fall. Um, our property tax is collected and distributed very much in arrears. So we will still, this coming year in 2022, really be living on our old financial model. So while we expect eventually to have local funding of about 31 to $32 million, this first coming year will be more like 26 million in this hybrid approach. We're okay. We have a great team who understands that, is efficient, and we know that this is um, a journey in terms of growing and modernizing TARDA. And then finally, there's close to a million dollars of the sales tax funding that goes back to local infrastructure. It actually, we, we return that to our seven communities and they can um, upkeep roads, they can build new sidewalks, street lights, things that benefit all of us using the transportation system. So this is just a little, um, our list, our, our what keeps us up at night, what keeps us busy day and night of what we need to do to make happen. And it all kind of, interconnects and weaves with something called Tarna Next. And um, when I was talking to our Tarna Next project manager, Neil Greenberg, um, he pointed out that this is really the first time Tarta, even though we're 50 years old, has had to grow or is growing. Actually, from 1971, it was always kind of shrinking in. And you think about how as um, across the country in the 1970s, we were moving out to the suburbs. We were all growing in terms of how many cars we had per household. We were relying less on public transit. Toledo metropolitan area was no different from the beginning of TARDA. Actually, our ridership um, and our situation was changing and it was moving inwards, kind of contracting our numbers. This is the first time we are in a growth mode. So to help us, how do we do that? I mean, how do we help serve? You know, Toledo's the fourth largest city in the state. We are in the six largest metro areas here. Um, all the economic momentum going on, how do we keep up with that? So TARDA Next, what that does is a plan, a comprehensive operational plan. We and you can see at one of our meetings, we literally just take a blank map and where do we need to go? How do we get there? How often? Um, in this scenario, we used pipe cleaners um, and each of the colors represented a different frequency of service. So maybe a bus service that could be 15 minutes or every 30 minutes versus something that's maybe like, you know, once an hour. And um, Again, that data-driven organization, so we've been doing a lot of data collection. The customer survey I talked about just earlier this fall. We've done a market analysis, so we need to know where do people live, where are the jobs, where are the grocery stores, the medical appointments. So we have to connect people. We can't just do this because it feels good or, I don't know, I think, I think going to Spring Meadows makes sense. No, we are data driven. Um, oftentimes what people feel and know about a community does make sense, but we want to layer that with data and analysis. We also have done a peer review study and we stay very close in touch and growing those relationships with peers. So what are the best of the best who relate to us? I'm going to be honest, I mean, I, I go to DC and I, I love the Metro. We're not gonna have a subway here, right? But if you go to Grand Rapids, that's a peer community. Grand Rapids, Michigan has awesome ridership. They have a lot of bus rapid transit. Um, how are they doing that? And their budget isn't much different from ours at all. So that's what we're doing. That's part of Tarda Next. Go to tardanext.com. All those documents are online for you. There are opportunities to get feedback. We have a Tarda Next advisory committee. So it's not just the board and the staff. We have key stakeholders across all parts of our community weighing in. Okay, so distill this into what are you going to see now in the next quarter, next six months. You're going to see Sunday service starting by March 2022. It was critical to us. That was the number one thing, whether we talk to our customers, whether we talk to community leaders, we need Sunday service back. Um, businesses are open. People need to get to church, religious services. We were the only system in Ohio that did not have Sunday service, only system our size. Um, and even even Ann Arbor, um, okay, they can win the, you know, 
the Big Ten game, but even though I'm Buckeye fan, but seriously, you know, they, they have Sunday service and we don't. So we can do better. We will do better. Um, we're going to continue to be out there partnering in the community, and you'll just see more of that happening with us. And so please engage with us. Our door is open. Um, we want to be out and about and sitting at the table for critical conversations and more technology. Um, we've already started to install technology and methods for county ridership, which TARDA never had. That's unacceptable. Um, and so we're going to continue to advance that as well as putting more technology on the buses for our operators. So it'll be a better experience all around. And it is go time. Um, so a lot happening, uh, believe it or not, I didn't touch on everything. So you can follow us on social media. You go to tarda.com. We have a monthly e-newsletter. Um, the branding, I just want to show that that's right by Huntington Center downtown here. So we're really trying to show that new image and we'll continue to work on that. And at this point, I hope I left time for questions. And hopefully everything I share just gets you kind of thinking more about what's going on. And um, I just really appreciate this chance to share with you all where we are at Tarda and where we're going. So thank you. Okay. So I guess... Oh. It was a great uh, speech and you did a great job. My question is, Kay, how many times a month do you ride the bus yourself to get a feel for it? Great question. I ride at least once a week. So I ride the 20 um, because I'm a downtown area resident. And then I try to get out and about so and to see the system as well. And I, I appreciate you bringing that up. So if anyone, if you haven't lately, you know, and you're wondering, I mean, we are fare free again. Um, we have lots of apps that can help you. And certainly I'd love, I would be more than happy to meet anyone um, and join you on your ride. It's the best way to learn. Thanks. Uh, great to hear about TARDA and its new, new life. Um, when I was living in Colorado 10, 15 years ago, they did talked a lot about TAD, transport, transportation-oriented development. Is that something TARDA is looking into? As you mentioned partnerships and development earlier. Um, that is a great question. Yes, absolutely. We are interested in looking at that. We've been, um, and Cindy Kerr and, and Connect Toledo has, kept us in the loop in conversations and plans downtown, but we've also had other um, areas reach out to us as well. So that is critical that we're right there at the beginning um, so that we know, I mean, things as, as little, but as important as where are bus stops placed and how are those amenities. Um, again, as someone who does, does ride the bus and has for years, I can tell you like where and when you have covered bus shelters and bus stops, but helping it to be something that's really viable. So you look at a lot of developments that have happened in downtowns, um, whether it's Austin or a Denver, and you know people move to cities with the, the belief, like I can really go down in one car, no car. And that means that our service has to be viable, it has to work for them, and the best way to do that is to get in early on conversations. So love to talk to you further and our door is open for any of those kind of conversations. Last one, please. You read about the difficulty, uh, you know, hiring drivers in the labor situation. Could you comment, uh, you know, because you're really uh, very dependent on your drivers, how that is working out? Thank you. Um, well, like everyone else, yes, we are. We have 20 available positions, so it's a um, do a little pitch there. Um, what we are doing, I mean, we're doing what a lot of others, right? I mean, hiring bonuses. We've increased our wages. We've um, done really good um, hard work to make sure that our health care benefits really are benefits. It's not just words on paper. Um, but the other thing we're doing in our team. 
Um, it's a combination of operations and scheduling. So Charles and Neil working on is looking at how we actually schedule our workforce and allow them. So, you know, we know that people, we think this is one of the best industries to get in. Um, in fact, both Charles and Neil were bus operators at one time, right? And look how they've moved up. Um, so it is a career journey, but we also know that in this day and age, people really value their personal time too. So we're trying to get innovative, think outside the box as to how, how do we schedule, how do we allow them to have a work-life balance as well. So it's something, it, I think, to be quite honest, we're gonna live with that. That is gonna be our new daily challenge, but we're up for it. Um, and again, go to tarda.com, lots of great job, part-time, full-time, um, please spread the word. And we'll teach anyone a CDL, license and you don't need one for Colorado or tarps. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Laura. In appreciation for your wonderful presentation today, uh, we'd like to present you with this book, Historical Tales of Toledo. We'll have some things that you'll remember. Yeah, thank you. And we'd also like to make a donation to the Polio Plus Fund uh, in your name. So thank you so much. Thanks. Turn to next, huh? Yeah, turn to next. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, appreciate it. All right. I see my man out there, Chuck Man. He's going to come up and he's going to give us a little chuckle. He said he's never heard that before. Uh, you may have heard some of these before, but there's some merit in the classics. These are letters from children to Santa Claus. Dear Santa, how old are you? How old is Mrs. Claus? Do you go to the bathroom at people's houses? Do the elves work all year or not? Do you have a kid? Also, I want a picture of you and your signature. Love, Devin. Dear Santa, I think you are a fat man, and I'm not leaving you any cookies because Mrs. Claus said you're on a diet. You need to stay away from junk food and don't eat too much on your trip around the world. That's why I'm leaving you vegetables this year with ultra skim milk. I hope you lose some weight because with all those toys, I start to feel sorry for Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, and Rudolph. Love you. Bye, Jennifer. Uh, from Flynn, dear Santa, if you want to grab a beer, please feel free to drink them all or just one. The fridge is in the kitchen. <laughs> dear Santa, I want a rainbow unicorn that poops ice cream. <laughs> dear Santa, you better bring me a pony this year or there will be consequences. <laughs> dear Santa, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. What I really want for Christmas this year is $53 billion. I love you, Chris. And my favorite, dear Santa, even though I know the truth, I want you to know how much I've enjoyed believing in you for the pa from the past 10 and a half years. Love, Ava. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thanks, Thanks Chuck, appreciate it. Uh, also, I, I forgot to mention early on, thanks to all that attended the holiday party last week. That was good fun on Friday. Uh, next week, we're going to have our holiday celebration at our meeting, and that will be the Toledo Symphony right here in this room. Uh, for that, we're going to be a little tight on seats because we usually have a lot of guests. So if you're bringing a guest, definitely RSVP so we have enough seats for you. Um, let me see. I guess that's it. So with that, we are adjourned. Thanks for coming, everybody.
Gespräch.